Illegal gold mining in Ghana is robbing the country of a key resource. It poisons the environment and endangers lives. But with gold commanding a fortune around the world and foreign speculators fueling a boom, Ghana's illegal gold trade is thriving. In this edition of Africa Investigates, Anas Arameo Anas goes undercover to reveal the corruption behind his country's most precious metal. The British named this country the Gold Coast, and not without reason. With gold prices surging on the world market, Ghana is experiencing a new gold rush, and that has led to more illegal mining with criminals taking control. Criminals with no concern for the environment, the protection of children, or the safety of miners. My name is Anas Arimiao Anas, and I'm an investigative journalist here in Ghana. I can't show you my face, because the work I do is dangerous. I am going undercover to find out who is behind this illegal business and how they are getting away with it. This is what they've been looking for. This is what brought them from China to Ghana. The land is rich, but most Ghanaians are poor. But there is quick money in Galamse the local name for illegal mining. What you are looking at here is illegal because small-scale miners require a license from the Minerals Commission. What they are doing here is unlicensed, unregulated, and unsafe. The miners build artificial barriers in the rivers, then drain the pools they create so they can dig down into the alluvial basin. The human cost is high. This is what happened in June 2010, when one river passed through the barrier. Rescue teams were organized and pumps were brought in to drain the pits. But even that was fraught with danger. One of the miners to die was Kofi Apa Amwabeng, on the left in this photograph. His wife explains why he took the risk. Up to 150 miners died in this tragedy. Only 17 bodies were recovered. For the villagers who lived nearby, the horror did not end there. The villagers, those people around, they have they have been removed from that place. Because they say when during the night, you hear them, they are saying, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold. You beat them, go, 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 go. They're making gig, 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 that I would do, I would do, you know. So those villagers have been moved from that, 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 that,
by chance, we hear that the local member of parliament is in the village on the same day we are. We track him down as he visits his father, the local chief. He denies he has any responsibility, even though nothing is being done to enforce existing mining laws. Um, no, I'm not in charge of uh, the death of anybody. Those, what they were doing was legal mining. It's very unfortunate that what happened. You know, there's some precaution that needed to be taken, but were not taken. If something of that nature happens, you can't blame the member of parliament because it's all because that, what they were doing was legal. They have acquired the land legally. But we are not talking about an isolated incident. Floods related to mining are happening more and more. So much so, President John Atamels recently traveled to a flooded area to announce a crackdown. We have to tackle the issue of Galamse rather seriously. Let's see how we can solve that problem. Because this is a clear indication of some of the effects yes, of Galamse. Far from being tackled, Galamse is now so widespread. Miners are moving onto the river itself. Strange new boats are appearing that can suck up silt from the riverbed, sidestepping the need to dig pits along the riverbanks. But the constant churning has turned once pristine waters murky brown. The shorelines are scarred. Cocoa plantations crushed by the heavy machinery that is dragged across them. This is a kind of distraction that we see in the society as a result of illegal mine, better still called than I'm seeing. And all this thing is taking uh, or has skyrocketed as a result of the surge in gold prices in the world. In order to understand the mining process, I joined some miners on their rig. They tell me these pontoons are a Chinese design. The parts are imported from China and assembled here. They are owned by businessmen the miners may never meet. They use a process to bind the gold using toxic mercury. The gold is attracted to the mercury. And until it's heated up, it's actually a silver color. The mercury and silt are then dumped back into the river when the miners are done. This is the same water local people use for washing and drinking. I need to find out more, so I decide to go undercover and look for a job as a miner. Work is not hard to find. We are told by locals to go to Pokukrum, a village about 100 kilometers from Dunkwa, and work will find us. We are selected, told to get into a truck and driven to a mining site. My job is to clear rocks that might clog the pipes that suck the salt up to the sifting carpet. It's obviously a Chinese-run site, but it's impossible to know who these men are or where they come from. One man in particular takes an interest in a watch where one of our cameras is hidden. You like it? <laughs> you buy? You buy this? Bring money, bring money. Not all illegal mines are Chinese run. On different occasions over a period of months, I went undercover and observed. Some sites were mined mostly by women and children. According to the Children's Act of 1998, children under 18 cannot engage in mining. The work is hard and not well rewarded. When it's time to be paid, we get our wages. 
10 cities for a day of hard labor. That's just over six US dollars. There are people making big money out of Galamse, but not the miners. On my way out from the mine, I found myself feeling so angry. So this is how me and my Chinese counterparts help destroy the river, as you can see. This polluted with cyanide, polluted with lead, polluted with engine oil and all other substances that kill aquatic life. I wanted to know what toll it was taking on water quality. So I traveled down river to the intake point for much of Ghana's water, including the capital city, Accra. This is the river Pra. It flows all the way from the top there down to the sea. So this is the intake where we take the water to the treatment plant for treatment. The water we treat, it must be of a certain quality before it goes to town. This is the laboratory that will tell you what quality of the water you are sending to town. 1999, early 2000, the nominal dosage for this plant was 45. 45, 45 milligrams per liter. It means for every one liter of the water that is coming, you need 45 milligrams of the chemical. Today, it's 75 average. See how much extra chemical you are adding to the water because of the activity. We have uh, things like cyanide, things like lead. Uh, those type of chemicals are associated with the mining activities. I asked him about the mercury that I had seen being dumped into the water upstream. He said they had no equipment here to test for it. Mercury has a limit that is unacceptable for treated water. So if, the, if it is said that the quantity of it in the river is high and we detect it here, then it will be, it, it will be a danger for us. You see, it's a whole chain of people that are involved in the galaxy activity. The people you see on the river mining there are not the people you can attack. How can we find those people who actually finance these Galamse people? I decided the only way to know the answer to these questions is by going undercover again, but this time as someone more powerful, so I can meet the men in charge. I have an idea. Well, what I'm trying to do is to spray this into a golden color. This is what is usually used traditionally to represent the strength of the local chief. I'm going to tell the Chinese I have land in a gold mining area and I want to do a private and illegal deal. Okay. This one won't touch that. You should leave that like that. And then... The next day at first light, we prepare ourselves for our undercover operation. One team is going to an illegal Chinese mining camp near Jurabansu in the western region. A second team will stay in a nearby village and monitor safety. And um, we're going to be having motor rollers in case there's any emergency. So this is the motor roller. This is for us. And then this is for the driving team. Now I want the conversation between the Chinese all listened into by the backup team. We drop the security team and buy a small amount of gold for our mission. This is the gold I am going to present to the Chinese. I'm going to tell them that this is the type of gold that can be mined on my land as a chief. They are definitely going to go for it because this is what they've been looking for. This is what brought them from, from China to Ghana, and this is what is making them operate illegally in this country. At the Chinese mining site, 
we are met by the boss, a man known as Soldier. Yesterday I told you I have some chief who has some land and I'll bring him. Do you remember? We want to see how we can work together. We have about 5,000 acres. Yes, 5,000 acres. Uh, Chami, uh, we want to show you the gold that we get on it for you to see. We exchange numbers and agree to further talks. But Soja and his Chinese colleagues will never come to the chief's land because at this point we pull out of our undercover operation. Yeah, we can hear you, but your line is not correct. Okay, we are ready waiting for you. We leave the site quickly in case our Chinese contacts decide to investigate our identities. What they are doing is clearly illegal, but it can only happen with Ghanaian collusion. If somebody has a phone for them, you see, when you're doing business, you have to have a Ghanaian passenger uh, partner. Yeah, but they are mining illegally by your definition. If they are in the river, then it means it's illegal. Does it not show that there's a country that anybody in any other country just prepares, take your one or two tools, come, just get into the river, and then start? Um, I'll be very glad that the questions you're asking me, if you could take bold decisions, it's not upon the MP, the parliamentarians, and the government. You are Ghanaian. You could take this snap also. He told me that if there is illegal activity, it should be reported to the police. I already had my suspicions about the security services. The police and military go to great lengths to make a public show of their disapproval of Galamse. This public relation video chronicles an operation to clear illegal site and confiscate equipment. But rumors abound that certain mine operators are tipped off before any security swoop. So I decide to go undercover again to find out how Ghanaian security services play their part in illegal mining. At the police station, I tell the duty officer I'm a Galamse operator working in partnership with foreign investors. I am immediately pointed in the right direction. I have a cover story and I tell the station officer, my rigs on the river were destroyed in a recent security raid. Foreigners are involved in helping me to re-establish myself. I'm building four new boats. I'm Jerry, but the woman is My two more hands are very good to build. It's a very good for you. I'm a good for you. I'm a good for you. Maybe I want to say hi to 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 you. One hour plus. One hour. I'm a good for you. If I'm going to make you pay yourself, I make an initial payment of 400 Ghana cities. Yeah. 
It's an amount close to 250 US dollars. With the station officer in my pocket, I decide to move up the food chain to the district commander. I found District Commander DSP Damwa relaxing at home in a town of Chifu Praso. What happened to me, I don't want to have it happen to me again. So where are you going to be? For now, I'll be within your territory. Why? On, on this area. He was cautious at first. Moving upstream. And for this, uh, for the town here, we will not permit anybody to do it. Okay. Because you see, this issue is a national issue. Yeah. It's a something with John Prasso. So how many boats are uh, For now, because of this support from this people, I'm putting on four. It's not small. That is why, even the one, the casualty I had, <laughs> I couldn't stand it. They let the load fall. Mm. The only thing is that uh, they are bringing some flexible terms so much such that even. Are you saying that they're going to go? Oh. Okay. So, Lieutenant, that you must know that the activity is really done. Okay. We are entitled to a risk adventure. And while you are engaged in legality, you're supposed to arrest you. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to you. Uh, I want to do something. Mm, I want to do something small here. Very, very, very small. Forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm being very little. For now, we could put me to jail for you. I hand him 200 Ghana cities, or about 120 US dollars. It's as easy as that. We took this footage to the Police Public Relations Department in the capital, Accra. District Commissioner DSP Damwa and Station Officer J.K. Atta are now under investigation. The corruption involved in Galamse activities has implications for all Ghanaians. In the village where the river tragedy claimed up to 150 lives, including this boy's father, people notice that it's the poor Ghanaians who can't afford to bribe the security forces who are harassed. Not the rich and not the Chinese. Chinese people are still mining. They are still working here, in our area here. Why? Why do you think? I don't understand. I can't understand. If the government want a good employment, they will arrange everything to pay their royalties, show them what to do, to not destroy waters around area. It will be very nice. Because people come from our country to mine here, give them concession. What about the, the, our own local people in Ghana here? This is here, on money because of where Ghana is here. Who be man here? Hmm. See, I have my dream be here. This is here, my this is here, our real school. When you dream be here, obey it. We have shown that this illegal and dangerous business is like the rivers themselves, polluted by corruption. It's the children I think about, the children who are lured away from a proper education to a life of hard labor, working for criminals for little money and a lot of risk. What's needed is government regulation and enforcement to protect our children, our environment, and our future.